Deep in the human unconscious is a pervasive need for a logical universe that makes sense, but the real universe is always one step beyond logic. I am Supernal, and this is Artist Spotlight. I have some wonderful line art to show you all today. This is some art by Danny Cruz, a good man, from America. Oh boy, make it good. This guy's got a pretty awesome style, kind of you know, old school in the sort of fantasy kind of realm. Definitely feels like it could be you know something you might see on like a, a 70s heavy metal, metal album cover art, something awesome like that. Really great for just some sick ass posters too. That is for sure. You'd probably see something like this in like a you know a record shop or something right when you go in. Just there or even even kind of you know, a little similar style to um what like warhammer 40,000 and dozen dragons kind of goes with it's definitely some good fantasy flair and let's jump into this shit hey this first one demon warrior this is i think is a good introduction um a lot of his art definitely doesn't have a huge focus on you know much of background um, he definitely does have some pieces that kind of explore uh, a much wider range. And plus, the kind of canvases that he goes with are a bit different. Uh, but a lot of them definitely are focused on a primary character. So in this one, um, the guy, you know, great. I love these horns. I really like sort of the demon kind of succubus kind of look. Mostly because the, the variety of form you can get with horns really adds a lot of flavor and almost seems endless you know there's so many different artists have their own take on kind of what that would look like how big they are sort of where they are on the on the head and but it's really fun what you can do too with really creating the texture of it you know there's like these ribs that are kind of going along and stretching out and then you know how are the horns going is it just straight or are they curving do they twist there's a lot of creatures uh, a lot of animals that you can use uh to kind of make that easy you know if you're tr trying to do something like this it can be tricky to kind of figure out how to do it especially make it look i don't know accurate <laughs> to some degree it's good to use reference images for that uh, and his is great here but the whole i like his art because you'll notice this uh, a little bit later but the poses he does you know this one is very good sort of guarded pose right he's got that awesome spear uh which man a pretty powerful uh, spear um, but as you look kind of more closely at it there's obviously an immense amount of detail a uh, really good capture of the lighting too um, not too many of his artwork goes into color but hey maybe that's just not his strong suit color is not not easy it can be tricky um, but as you go to the bottom of the screen this is what I like with his art is that so, of course, with each character, there's a lot of emphasis with the, you know, the armor and how everything is posed and musculature is great. But even all the small stuff, you know, the bracers and he's got a cloak flowing. He has kind of what looks like sort of scale mail, kind of chain mail popping out there. Um, he doesn't actually have boots on. I don't think I really realized that. But he has like little ankle bracers and some like various tufts and everything. So there's a lot of good texture and small little pieces, right? Kind of go along. He's got a big hoop earring uh, on his ear, which is a little different. Uh, but then his left foot is on the skull of like a, some giant's head. I just like that. You know, instead of just having some guy just standing there, right? And even sure, you got like the various skull and bones that are kind of on the ground there, uh, which are slightly vague uh, on the behind, which is good for showing some distance. But having the the skull of that giant and it's still like intact too as if he is sort of just to fear this guy or was in a battle and is now kind of looking back at everything and you know that was some troll that he just annihilated and still having you know, a lot of good uh texture and everything and line variants throughout really makes you just this fairly seemingly simple kind of straightforward artwork actually become a lot more and with a second one here titled devil king redux uh, this adds in 
some more flavor of what he'll do uh, with many of his pieces. Having some other creatures and characters coming on creates then a dialogue and a movement, uh, simply because if you have a lot of multiple pieces within the th- uh, within artwork, within the composition, there is more sort of implied movement, even though they're kind of just there, right? So if you... There's some classical works of art that will have, like, you know, sort of in France, they're sort of uh, on, you know, just in a garden, and, you know, it might be like 10 or 20 people all kind of there, and they're not all necessarily moving. They could be sitting in all different positions, but it gives this sort of slight tension or sort of, like, air to it that obviously not all these people are just sitting there stone cold, right? There is this movement. Uh, but of course, posing and everything too has that implication. But also, just having your characters sort of doing something, you know. Of course, the guy and I love this sword. I, I dig swords, especially ones that are all demonic and crazy like this. Uh, and this one's like a kind of a curved great sword. Um, the handle and everything, the eye on there, and the blade actually has you know get real. I love when artists get you know kind of. Well, really just <laughs> creative with it, honestly. There's no better way to explain it than just that. But getting creative with it, you're adding all these little markings and everything, and getting kind of wild with having uh, just the line going in various forms, you know, and have those little teeth kind of jagged there. But he's got these two little imp dudes at the bottom that are kind of poking around and messing around, and, you know, there's, there's a really good expression of the of the movement and how all the muscles are kind of... I wouldn't say gyrating, but you kind of get what I mean. Like, you know, sort of this gnarled kind of, I'm going to say like chocolatey feeling to it, right? It They don't feel static. That's kind of the thing. And it, it can be subtle enough, you know, and even just having a little thing here and there, even just having like a butterfly kind of just roaming around like as an example, even that gives enough just kind of displacement to where it's, you know, you kind of catches your eye and adds more to it. And again, the, and just like we looked at the first one, you know, each character has, um, you know, a lot of small little elements to them that really, you know, add on and add on and add on that really build and, and create. And one thing actually, looking at this a little more on this guy's left wing, looking at the, if you can, you might need to zoom in and see this, but... Just the way that the lines are going really is is pretty immense. It adds a particular texture to it, this roughness, kind of graininess to it. But it, it you can tell that um, this is something that I've worked with, with, just talked with some other artists online. It's not, you can actually, when you look at it a little more, especially that right, well, his left wing, but on the right side, gives a really good example of not focusing on the outline and building out the form from inside out, so from within, starting at the center point and going outward. And it doesn't create too much of that kind of cartoony, comic-y look. Uh, but of course, eventually when you build it out enough, obviously, that outline is going to be there. And the outline is just the spot where the shape sort of ends. And it's it's not supposed to be there it's invisible the outline is invisible so if you do it right the outline should kind of be an implied it shouldn't be really expressed it's only really expressed depending on like the object material the lighting sometimes it's fairly obvious you know Uh, but obviously as well with the style this guy's particular style you know it just works out that way and especially if you want to get in lighting it's a really good way of not necessarily building the outline and going back in and just kind of cross-hatching out and going crazy. And this third one, I actually like a lot. Uh, Samurai Showdown. This piece is a, really, I think, shows Danny's uh, skill with really having immensely expressive forms. And the posing and the position. I think this is really his strong suit. I mean, the the... Well... I guess we'll say Samurai Buddies, and it doesn't exactly have a katana there. I don't quite know the name of that kind of weapon. I know there is actually sort of like a like a spear-esque type of katana, where it literally just looks like a normal katana, but the handle is 
way long as if it was a spear, but it still has like the handguard and everything at the top, and the blade isn't necessarily like a huge, isn't like longer, it's just like normal almost. But regardless, you know, he's got like kind of like a Bardiche thing going on here, right? Just the whole pose and everything, and it's very graceful too. And I really like, you notice, and this is a good thing, you kind of having this variance of not just line, but of form to the guy's hair, right? There's just, you can tell that it's just a couple lines, basically. There's not a whole lot going on there in terms of, you know, you see a lot of people when they do hair and everything, they really go in with shading and really kind of just filling it out, whereas this... He just kind of said, all right, here's kind of where it is, and just whoosh, boom, it's done. And it, it really gives that impactful expression, and especially the movement. I mean, that's a great example of showing just very straightforward and simple. Just, you know, it creates all of the hair. You can just see is just this writhing, just whoosh, it's flowing, it's going nuts. Uh, and having these other pieces of cloth material you know on sort of like the ninja guy on the left you know he's got kind of like a scarf kind of thing that's popping out and the way actually you see how it's kind of going in the background right the depth of it it sort of tapers off almost and just turns into a singular line that's really great and and again you really i, I love art line art like this um and really in general but particularly like this just you really can get it absorbed and it's almost like you just fall into the artwork uh, with all the details and everything. I mean, you look at, like, where on the, on the ninja guy, where his torso is kind of going down from his shoulder to uh, his pelvis, all of the way, the contortions of the material, his, you know, clothes, everything, just how all that is that interacting really is, is, just a, is fucking amazing. Um, and when you kind of look at it, it almost seems like there's not a whole lot going on. I mean, there's, it's a, there's a lot of, uh, the contrast, of course, is very high, but you know, it's a fairly dark black spot, some white spot, black spot, white spot. So, and I, I say that to explain how really it's, it's not that there's not a lot going on, but when you kind of look at it, it's like, oh, there, there, that's kind of, it's simple. And you just add on, you use a lot of these kind of straightforward, simple, kind of basic, not sort of basic, but not really, but the part of that that's basic is that it's sort of a simple, straightforward thing, but the way that's advanced about it is what's really masterful is how you utilize all these really simple things, interweave them into, and just express them. That's really how you get some amazing stuff like this. Now, this last one is Chrom... In color, because yeah, he does have some colored pieces. I wanted to show just um, at least one of his colored pieces. There weren't too many that I could find, but this one's pretty great, and especially the way he did the coloring, it's actually pretty darn good. And I imagine he probably spent some time on this, and with all the artwork he does too, coloring all that would just take so much more time. So I definitely understand not coloring everything, and hey. You know, I, I definitely can kind of understand it from his, his standpoint. It can be a bitch and a half to have to go through all of those steps for everything. And you're like, hey, it looks good enough as a line art. People who like a line art are like, yes, that is fantastic. Continue. But just as an expression of how he does it, and it works out really well. And this particular, you know, artwork itself is great. I mean, you know, he, he has such brutal characters. I love this sh display of brutality and this thickness, heaviness of all the characters. And, you know, I, there's definitely... Um, I can't... I don't know the name of the artist, per se. Um, but if you look back to... Hmm, I want to say maybe like the 90s. Um, the cover art, and really just art in general, for a lot of like Terminator and Alien, those comics... That particular kind of, the way his, Danny's style is very similar to that. It reminds me of that. In terms of just how brutal, and the way that the, a lot of the coloring was, the gradation within the different colors, you know, like around the, the sort of the beast there that's got its mouth open. The sort of, the redness around the mouth that then just gradually goes into the normal skin color, right? 
that sort of hint that maybe there was blood there, or even just, you know, when skin itself just gets, you, know, you rub your hand or you were doing something, it, it's kind of a little more red. It, it radiates all in a particular pattern, or, you know, when you're messing with your face or something, right, with like a, a pimple or something, same thing happens. Uh, that sort of irritation, everything builds up. Uh, but good consistency of color, and, you know, the again, very simple background, and you don't need to have a whole lot. He's standing on some, like, rock thing, and and has good, um, you know, red and red and green. There you go. But the whole thing works out really well. And gosh, he always has these really interesting weapons, too. I mean, the weapon is just gnarly as a motherfucker. And I love just looking at the the blade, too. The, the blade really adds a lot of character to a weapon, too. Not just the little marks and pieces to it, but... The way, I mean, it's so... You can really do a lot with a blade. And I think looking at... Just if you kind of focus on how that looks, you know the roundness of these parts, um, sort of the segments of it, just every little piece, how it all flows in, it almost looks, it really does look like it's something that could legit exist and really fuck you up in the face. But it's it's so masterful how uh, how well he's done this, and man, you definitely should check out more of his art because there's a hell of a lot more very much like this. Line art like this just it makes you feel manly as hell, and Danny is definitely a manly ass artist. And please give this guy a look over. I'll have all the information so you can see his artwork in the comments, and just let him know what you think. Uh, if you, I don't think he's doing any commissions now. Some artists, yeah, when they have commissions, usually they fill up pretty fast. But keep an eye out. Cause if he does some, hey, you might get some pretty kick ass artwork from this dude. That. Well, otherwise, it'd be pretty hard to find, and that'll do it for this episode. Appreciate all of you for listening, as usual, and I'll have more coming soon. Hope the rest of your day goes wonderful.